What's up guys, it's Damp. Uh, thank you very much for your patience uh, with some of the video content I've been making. IRL, I've been extremely busy, so you guys probably don't give a shit about that. Let's get down to it. So I'm going to talk to you today about the Occultist. So today is the launch of Darkest Dungeon on PlayStation, which is awesome. Congratulations to the DD team. Um, and uh, you'll be seeing me with that new wave. You'll be seeing me finish out the list of the class guides over the next few weeks. And then also I'm going to relaunch the top 10 tips um, now updated for full release on both the PC and console. So uh, let's talk about the Occultist. So the Occultist is one of the... Um, probably one of the most utilized characters in the game because he has the ability to heal. Uh, but I don't think a lot of other people realize where he falls in as far as his utility abilities and how he pairs with certain um, people. So um, we'll talk a little bit about the pros and the cons of the occultist. So the pros and the cons of the occultist. The pros are that he's able to heal. Absolutely, that's a good thing. And he fills a utility role that the Vestal is really not able to do. Uh, due to the fact that he is able to be slightly more offensive, even though he uh, kind of was nerfed a few months back, where he used to be really, really strong against Eldritch. So he excels in any of the Eldritch maps, um, and he also uh, pairs really well with uh, anybody who has a mark attack, Bounty Hunter and Houndmaster especially. Um, but, you know, they've recently added... Let's see... Um, the thrown dagger to that concept with the grave robber and you've got the arbalist who's able to do some damage to mark targets as well so overall it pairs really well with um, pretty much any character that's going to have a mark the occultist is going to do pretty well with you guys probably know that part you're like damn we know that that's easy but what a lot of people don't know about the occultist and where he can shine is having the ability to really handcuff a lot of the mobs that people find are very RNG based. So one example of that would be like the tree branch attack that can just absolutely one shot you um, to death's door uh, if you get crit with it. So weaken and curse is something that I really don't see utilized a lot um, that can be really powerful. Um, and if a boss is not resistant to debuffs, uh, this is another thing that plays very well in some of those fights. So you have to kind of go boss by boss. I won't really, you know, analyze that or break it down for you guys who don't have time in this video. But the minus damage concept and the debuff concept as a whole is really underutilized in, in Darkest Dungeon. Um, but it's a legitimate tactic that you can use if you're just tired of doing the old, you know, straight uh, damage... Or, you know, some people like to use move parties or leapfrog parties. You're just looking for a different way to play. The occultist can be utilized in that way. Um, some of the cons that the occultist has is that he's really RNG-based. I mean, sure, you can heal from 0 to 20 with his reconstruction heal. Um, you can get 20s, 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 18s, 19s. But you can get 0s, you can get 1s and 2s, you can get 3s. Um, and sometimes it just doesn't seem to work out that way, or the way you want it at least. So as you go through and you look at the Occultist, um, I would say that he's probably, I would rank him in the bottom half as far as the strongest characters or heroes in the game. Um, he's, he's towards the middle though. If you look at where he prefers to play, I typically will run him in slot three or four, but you can play him offensively on some of those maps um, with the right trinkets and use Abyssal Artillery um, and Sacrificial Stab actually pretty, it's it's not bad. He's not a great offensive character. He's above the Antiquarian, obviously, but um, he can be underrated. He also can pair well with mobs that can't hit all four rows, like the Leper. You can pull some of those mobs in the back you know, two slots that tend to do a lot of damage to you up to the front two rows so that the leper can usually one-shot him. So uh, he does have the ability to stun, but the stun's not the strongest. And also, I, I really don't favor using healers in a stun roll. I like to keep my, my party around 50% or better, so I usually don't use the healers to stun. And I really don't think stun is that as strong as what most people think. That's just my opinion. 
Um, but really where he shines is that you're going to pair him with a Bounty Hunter, a Houndmaster, an Arbalist, anybody that can do additional damage to marked targets. His drawback to his mark is that it's minus dodge. So it's not as good as what you might see with getting through prot, like you see in the Houndmaster. He can get through 30% of the prot once he's marked. But that's kind of why I rate him um, middle to bottom half. So as we look at where you're going to use, or what you're going to use as far as quirks, um, ignore this clotter. Uh, that was in its infancy. This gameplay I've played since really day one of the of the launch since early access. So ignore that. What the quirks you're going to focus on are going to be the the speed, um, speed and dodge primarily are are two good ones. And so on guard would be another one that would be okay. But quick reflexes is really going to be the best one. Really for any healer, quick re reflexes is going to be there. Um. If you're going to use them offensively, some people use like the Eldritch Hater. Um, they'll lock that in. Personally, I think Early Riser, if you're going to run them in light runs and quick reflexes, are two that are really strong. And the third one, I usually favor Evasive or some sort of dodge. Late game, that isn't as effective. So if you're, if you're there late game, I'd say probably consider, uh, you know, the Eldritch spell if you want to use them in more of a utility role. There's a lot of different ways to play him, and that's kind of how the utility characters work. So I, I won't give <clears throat> a, a ton of stuff away, but I would say you could favor hard skin to get the prot, um, but it, the speed ones are really where you want to be. Uh, so as far as negative quirks that you really want to avoid, there aren't, you know, it's really just the basic ones. Anything that's going to slow him down, though, you don't want in a healer. That's obvious, but... The, use basically the same advice I've given you before. Uh, the, another reason why I rate him in the bottom half is his camping skills are lackluster. So when we look at his camping skills, it, it really, these are mediocre, um, if not detrimental, because you see they add stress. Stress is really the true killer in the game, and if you're a newer player, you have, you'll figure that out very quickly. Stress sucks up your money. Um, it sucks up your resources, and it very well can kill you. Your health is going to get better almost instantly when you leave the dungeon, but stress takes time. Time's money, time's gold, it's resources that you're going to have to use, it's people you can't bring on the next run. So these are really lackluster. These are the two I'd bring with him um, for sure. You could consider this one, but again, it's kind of risky. I, I really don't use most of his camping skills. This is a last-ditch effort if I really don't want a nighttime ambush and somebody would be on death's door, but very rarely do I use this. Maybe this on a boss fight, but again, it's stress that we don't need going into a boss fight, so I don't really use a lot of these. Um, diseases you could use, uh, the fits you could consider, but eh, I don't know. I, I really wouldn't carry anything. Rabies definitely isn't worth it. Um, so now down to kind of the meat of probably why you're here. The combat skills that I recommend running depend on how you're going to play, but primarily I play him as a healer and a marker. So these two are pretty much non-negotiables. The reconstruction spell and his vulnerability hex. If you're going to play him with a leper or really parties that really have strong attacks in the first two rows, consider Demon's Pool. I really, in my playstyle, I just I build parties that do not have to worry about pulling mobs. They can attack all four rows. It makes it very easy. If you wanted to play it a different style, then this is something you could bring. If you aren't going to bring this, um, I bring Ab Abyssal Artillery and Sacrificial Stab. So here's the reason I bring Ab Abyssal, Abyssal Artillery. If you get let's say you're a cultist, you're starting off, and I always say to favor playing aggressively, there's no reason to hit the back two rows for a decent amount of damage, especially if it's Eldritch. Hit the back two rows and let somebody else finish that off so they aren't going to have another turn on you next turn. If you go into a boss fight or one of those tree branch type fights, or maybe a ghoul, you could consider bringing Weakening Curse and using those. Sacrificial Stab is another one that you could change in and out depending on where you're going to play him. But I think it's a good spell in case you get, or, or a good attack skill rather, in case you get moved to the front and it's towards the end of a fight, you can just finish something off rather than trying to shuffle your party all again and incurring more stress and, and more damage. 
As far as the trinkets, I recommend, again, there's a lot of different ways to play him, guys, but these are pretty much the standard. Um, the Cleansing Crystal will prevent him from bleeding when you're doing the heal spell. You know, that's something I didn't really allude to in the beginning as a con because so many people run this. It, it, I do not recommend it running him as a healer until you've got the Cleansing Crystal. Um, you can do it, but it's the Vestal just severely outperforms him until you get this Cleansing Crystal. Uh, the Feather Crystal, I think, is a, a great, um, great trinket for him because it's got the speed and it's got dodge. Um, and he, he is fairly dodgy, if you will, um, but really where he shines is when he has the Cleansing Crystal and he can heal. Then you really don't have to worry about bleeds. It's very rare, from my experience, of somebody bleeding when you have a Cleansing Crystal. So I don't know that I consider the bleed like a complete con, because you can manage through it if you can get the RNG heals. It's really the RNG heal that I think it, it really makes him uh, less effective. So he is a fun character to play based off the way that he can he pairs well with a lot of different play styles. Uh, but overall, I do rank him bottom half. But this cleansing crystal and his resistance to bleed allows you to like you can see how high it is. I, I mean the quirk's fifteen percent, but even without that, with that trinket on, he can do very well in certain dungeons that. Uh, enemies tend to bleed you, and I don't want to give away any spoilers, so that's what I'll leave it at if you haven't gotten to a certain point in the game. Um, so, anyway, that's a wrap-up of The Occultist. Uh, hopefully that helps you guys. Um, I'll be launching the next few videos over, uh, really, the next couple weeks. I'll be out next week, and then when I come back, I do plan on getting caught up and finishing off all the class guides. Then I, I will deliver the top ten tips for Darkest Dungeon. So thanks, guys, very much for watching. I appreciate all the support. We had a million views um, a couple weeks back. So thank you very much. I will see you in the next video.